this is the first summer that I've grown in a polycrop. And my polycrop is actually only six months old at this point. We built her earlier this year, built the beds inside, planted it up, and have been harvesting from her for weeks. Now today I'm going to be harvesting everything that I can out of here because tomorrow I've set aside as a day of preserving. But I'd like to also talk to you about what we've experienced thus far with a polycrub, some tips on how I've been growing some of the veg back behind me. And also we can talk about ways that I'm going to be using the tomatoes and eggplants and chilies and cucumbers and so much more that have been absolutely abundantly flowing out of this new growing space. I can't wait to show you. <laughs> it is really like wading through a jungle in here. I love it. I've never been able to grow this many warm weather or warm climate crops before. Tomatoes and melons and butternut squash. These are all crops that need warmth and heat to really start producing. And here on the Isle of Man, we generally have neither heat nor even a lot of sun in the summertime. Can't really be counted on. And so Outside, things like cabbages and leafy greens do great because we tend to get a lot of rain here. The summer has been a little bit different. We have had heat waves. But because of having this undercover space, I can grow all of this now. And it's just incredible, just the possibilities of what I can grow now. Polycrubs are hard-shelled polytunnels. And the reason that I chose a polycrub over any other polytunnel is because of my climate. So I needed a structure that would give a lot of protection and warmth, but also withstand storms. And so that is why I chose a polycrub. And since we built this structure six months ago, it has seen several storms and it has not budged at all. I am super pleased. Polycrub took about two to three weeks for the build, and that includes the time that Josh and I spent leveling the site and digging the post holes, and also getting our friends John Dog and Dave to come and help us to build the structure. Now, once the polycrub was built, then we had this amazing space inside, but really hard packed earth underneath. And the soil here is filled with hardcore, so we've got bricks and all kinds of rubble in the soil, and it really wasn't an option to dig beds into the ground. And so that's why I decided on three beds, one on either side and one down the middle. And I've left a little bit of space at the front because I want to put in a couple of chairs here as well and just be able to enjoy this space, especially in winter. The beds are raised beds and we built them in a pretty conventional way, except for they're very long and so they need to have some supports down the center. And also we decided on sealing all of the cracks and crevices with a non-toxic sealant. And the reason behind that is that we wanted these to be as water retentive as possible. So we didn't want water and nutrients coming out between the cracks, between the planks. And that has been a fantastic decision. And I would highly recommend that to anyone who's building raised beds, whether they're in a polycrub or not. Now, once the beds were built, we filled them and we used topsoil that we had here on site and also compost that we brought in and vermiculite and that is it and all of the lush growth that you see growing in here is growing from those nutrients alone once i planted all of the young plants in here i did put a top dressing of pure compost on the top and that locks moisture in from from above and also it will help to keep the soil and the compost rejuvenated with fresh nutrients every time that I water in here. Mm -hmm. 
Now, as far as all of the plants growing in here, I started them off from seeds and for the most part and then started them in the house in February and March of this year. And then when they were large enough, I potted them on and then took them out to the greenhouse. And then when these beds were completed, I planted them up in here. And most of the plants have a string as a support. Obviously these indeterminate tomatoes want to grow vertically as do the cucumbers and the melons down at the ends. But the, the aubergines, the eggplants in the center, they get quite heavy when the fruit are on the stems and so they need a bit of support as well. So strings hung down from bamboo canes that are supported on these hoops without any nails or anything is what I'm using. And that was a little bit of a eureka moment of Josh's actually, when we were trying to figure out how to put these strings in and he suggested just sliding them behind the black hoops here and along the wooden struts and it has worked perfectly. And that means that I don't have to damage the structure at all by screwing or nailing anything in. We can take those bamboo canes out if we need them in the future. So we've got those vertical supports. I used a wool based twine for the supports initially. And let me tell you, I will not do that again. I thought that the wool would be nice and stretchy, really supportive. But once these plants start producing a lot of fruit and getting heavy, that string has a tendency to snap. And it's happened three times now. And I think we caught it a couple of weeks ago in a video and then we used those tomatoes off that plant that had uh, fallen over to make green tomato chutney. And there's a video and a full recipe if you want to learn how to make that. And now for the main event, picking these lush, ripe, beautiful tomatoes. And let me tell you, the scent is amazing. We're going to start with the big pinks here on the end. There are a couple of them. They're an ox heart shape. So good slicing tomato, I've not grown them before. And then next to them is purple calabash, which is a new one for me as well. Quite a few of these are new and they are beautiful, gorgeously colored tomatoes, big ones that we can use in both fresh eating and in cooking. Next to the black calabash are black crim, which a lot of people have told me is their favorite tomato and I can see why beautiful dusky plum color, but a sweet flavor. And then next to them is Tigerella. And Tigerella is one that I've grown for a number of years and it has these gorgeous stripes on the side and you can have that as a salad tomato, or you can cook with it as well. And speaking of cooking tomatoes, on the other side of them are the plum tomatoes. So these are the San Marzano's, red cooking tomatoes, great for making tomato sauce and making stewed tomatoes and they can get really big. Most of them along here aren't ripe yet, but I have a good couple that I have picked. And now I've made myself down to the Ailsa Craig. Now this is the tomato plant that keeled over a couple of videos ago, and I used a tress of the green tomatoes from this plant to make the green tomato chutney. And there are quite a few here that are ripe, and so I'm gonna pick these next. Now with picking tomatoes, a lot of people already know this, you just pull them lightly off of the stem. If they don't pull easily, then they're not ripe. But if they just pluck off like that, either with the, the little bit of stem on the top or without, either way, they're ripe. If you're tugging on them and they're just not coming free, then leave them to ripen a little bit more. There will be plenty of time to pick ripe tomatoes. And I have quite a few here. This trug is really starting to fill up and I haven't even started on the other side. The weather has taken a little bit of a turn for the worse. And so I've closed the doors on either side and I'm going to continue harvesting in here. And I have a, a few cucumbers here already and I'm going to continue on with the aubergines as well. But first I want to talk to you about the difference between this growing space and outdoors, the major growing difference. And that is how I'm using vertical space. 
I use vertical space out in the main veg patch. So for example, with the climbing beans, with the sweet peas, with the garden peas. But in here, in this polycrub, or perhaps you have a polytunnel or greenhouse, you have a special protected warm space that doesn't get bowed over by wind, that can stay warm even on cold days. And so maximizing the space in here for growing as much food as possible is the most important thing for me. And so I use a permaculture principle of growing in layers. You'll notice that there are lots of vertical plants, cucumbers growing up strings all the way to the ceiling in some cases, the melons as well, indeterminate tomatoes, making use of all of this space up here. And then a little bit lower, I have peppers and chilies growing. I also have basil at that level, uh, ginger as well, and then on the very bottom layer in places, I've got sweet potatoes, I've got the butternut squash. And so they are all growing together side by side really healthily. The roots are in the same medium, growing medium, but their foliage and their fruits, their harvests are appearing at all different levels. It's making use out of this space. And if you are going to invest in a covered growing space like this, Mine is only four by seven meters in size, which is a good size, but not huge in the grand scheme of things. You might as well make use out of all of the space given. I could harvest probably about 20 cucumbers right now. There's just so many of them growing down here and we have had the cucumbers coming out our ears. Most of them I've been fermenting, but I want to make some relish as well. Let's cut this last one. And then let's, let's harvest some aubergines. Now I've got aubergines over there, here, everywhere. And aubergines, I've only ever grown one or two plants at a time and I've got quite a few here and they're loving growing inside the polycrub, thriving. There are just so many coming on. And if you look closely just down below here, you'll see there's little ones more towards the tops of the plants. That's sweet potato. But down below, weighing down this plant back here, can you see all of those? All of these purple aubergines, eggplants, so, so many. I've just been astonished by the harvest. So let's cut some of these off, the bigger ones, just nipping them with my secateurs, my snips, and we'll pop these over here as well. And Josh made an awesome moussaka recently with homegrown everything except for the lamb. <laughs> and then I think that I'll make some ratatouille as well. I'm gonna leave the smaller ones here just so that they can fill out a bit more, but those are some decent sized ones. And I've seen some even bigger ones just over there. I've just picked three more really good sized aubergines from this plant just here. I'm just gonna set them aside, but I'm over here because I'm excited to harvest this big aubergine eggplant from the only Mitoyo eggplant that survived. I sowed the rest of my seeds. They were from Baker's Creek. And I had a few come up, but this was the only one that did well. And look at that lovely aubergine. Aubergines should be shiny if they're going to be any good. I've got a couple that are not as shiny but these will do just fine, really lovely aubergines, but you can see the difference between the Matoyo here in size and shape, and then this really long moneymaker type. Mm -hmm. 
I've just harvested the rest of those aubergines or as many as I've been able to spot thus far. And there's a small mountain of them. Now it's on to harvesting more cucumbers. I'm growing three types here in the polycrub, a pickling type, so a gherkin type uh, cucumber, which I've been using in making dill pickles, but also in ferments. Then there's the F1 baby, which is a really small, tasty, tender cucumber. And then this last one is burpless tasty. And my word, they can get quite large. And there are two biggies over here. And I've probably should have ooh, harvested them previously, but we had so many of them growing. Oh my goodness. Can you see the size of that? That is huge. I've just cut the second one. It's a little bit smaller than that first one, but still pretty big. And I think that I'm going to have to find a creative way to use these. I'm thinking maybe some relish. What do you think? If you had these as a harvest, what would you do with them? Now mind that a lot of the inside of it will be seeds and need to be scraped out probably, but there's plenty that you can be doing with cucumbers this size. Let me know as a comment down below. So we've picked tomatoes, we've picked cucumbers, we've picked eggplant, and now it's all about peppers. I've picked as many off of this plant as I care to take. There are a few smaller ones hidden inside here. They might get a little bit bigger, they might not, but regardless, you can leave peppers and chilies on the plant until you're ready for them in most cases. And sometimes they'll change color, but one thing that they do is stay relatively fresh. And I've got six of these sweet peppers ready to go. These are F1 Cardinal. They're kind of a, a deep, dark purple color, but also when you put them in the pan, they turn this dark forest green color, so they don't stay this color unless you have them raw. These aren't the only ones that I'm growing though. Let's go have a look at the other ones. This is another one of the F1 Cardinals and it doesn't have any fruit on it. I've taken most of them off, but there are flowers here. So hopefully they will turn into these guys. So I need to come back and maybe take these off as well. There are some others in here too. And because these tomatoes are quite tall and leaning forward, I've been pushing these guys back so that they're growing more towards the back of this bed. And of course there's the padrones and I've had a few comments about people harvesting these much smaller and they're sweeter. And you know what? That theory that leaving them to grow larger might mean that they grow spicier is probably true because almost all of these that we've picked and, and eaten has been mega spicy. You need to come back and pick all of these guys off and you can see the little ones starting to form. This is the size I think that most people who grow them down in Spain and Portugal tend to harvest them at. Next door to the Padrones we have the Tokyo Hots and they're these long chilies here. And they've been relatively mild until recently, and then they've all of a sudden developed a lot of heat. But I want them to change color to red before I pick them. You can see masses of them in there. And then once they're red, I'll save them, I'll pick them, dry them out, and then pulse them into a, a chili powder. And then the last pepper that I'm growing are the Chinese space chilies, the Hangi Zhao 8s. And these are supposed to be mild as well, but they've been quite spicy. And my theory on that is that apparently chilies and peppers can become a lot spicier if they're stressed. And it has been very warm in the polycrub. So 
perhaps that's the reason that most of these have been quite spicy rather than mild. I'll come back to pick these, but I think that there are a couple over here, maybe, maybe not. There's definitely some padrones over here though. So we've got a few chilies to add to the harvest as well. The sun is back. Wonderful. It's been quite the afternoon of harvesting veg from the polycrub and we've got the tomatoes, the cucumbers, peppers and chilies and then of course these beautiful aubergines. Quite a few of them. Now a lot of work went into growing these. Not only building the polycrub and the beds but also propagating the plants and keeping them healthy and thriving despite heat waves and cold weather and all of that. And the work isn't finished yet because tomorrow we're going to be preserving this lot, most of it, for the winter. So cooking it up and then freezing and then also doing a little bit of canning as well. It is satisfying though, extremely satisfying to be able to grow your own. And the polycrub has really opened the door to growing a lot more of this type of produce. And this is stuff that I cannot grow over there in the veg patch, or not easily. Cucumbers, yes, but the rest of these would struggle. So the polycrop has been an amazing investment. Not only that, but inside the polycrub, there are tons of vegetables that are still growing and ripening. And so we have plenty more harvests ahead. Couldn't be more delighted. Now, if you've got any questions about any of the veg or the growing techniques or advice that I've given in this video, let me know as a comment down below. And also, if you're interested in polycrubs, I'll leave a link down in the video description. And they're a fantastic company based in the Shetland Islands. And I couldn't say more positive things about the polycrub. It is everything that I expected it to be and very, very pleased with putting it here in the home garden. Thanks so much for coming along with me and harvesting all of this. I wish I had your hand tomorrow in getting it sorted, but I'll let you know how it goes. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next week here on Lovely Greens. Bye for now.